Oncology TV here at ASCO 2015. I'm Thomas Baldrick. To my right is Dr. Daniel Siampe de Andrade. Thanks for stopping by, sir. Thank you. So you must be very important with four names. Yes, <laughs> it's a common <laughs> thing in my country. Okay. <laughs> All right, so thanks for coming all the way from Brazil. Um, let's talk about this phase three study looking at the safety and efficacy of Pregnolin. First off, um, tell us about the mechani mechanism of action with this drug. So Pregnolin is known as an anticonvulsant, and it acts um, in the, when you have the pain fibers, in the first communication, first synapses between the first nerve that carries the pain signal to the second neuron that is in the, the spinal cord, there's a, the release of a neurotransmitter called glutamate. And pregabalin decreases the amount of glutamate released in the synapses. So we say that it's a modulator of central sensitization, of the transmission of pain. It doesn't block, it's not an anesthetic. It, we call it anti-hyperalgesic. So it decreases the gain of inflammation of pain. So, in this, in this study, you have a clinical problem that is um, oxaliplatin-induced neuropathic pain and neuropathy. Um, most patients with colorectal cancer will receive oxaliplatin, and oxaliplatin causes two types of neuropathy. An acute one that is mainly an inflammation of the cell body of the neuron, and it, it causes um, uh, insensitivity to cold, Patients cannot tolerate when they take the silverware and it's just cold, they feel pain. When you drink cold water, they feel pain. And this may be even dose limiting for the chemo dose. So, and all, almost all patients have this acute neuropathy. And some patients, about 15 to 20% of patients will have a different type of neuropathy that will occur later on. It's a chronic neuropathy that will occur a few months after the end of the, of the chemotherapeutic treatment. Despite the, these, these two types of neuropathy, they have different mechanisms of action. But it has been shown that if you have a very intense acute neuropathy, you may ha you have a 40 times higher chance of having a uh, chronic uh, neuropathy. So our idea was to use a drug like pregabalin that decreases this excess, excessive stimulation of pain signals in the acute phase to try to prevent chronic neuropathy. So we, we enrolled 206 patients who had colorectal cancer and were going to receive, they had either stage three or four, um, and they were receiving the modified flux um, scheme. And the, the interesting thing is that some, pa some, some studies just gave drugs to everybody. So you cannot say you're doing a prophylactic treatment, you're just treating everybody before anything starts. So we try to really do something to protect the patient the moment of the, of the infusions. So we gave pregabalin three days before and three days after the, the, the oxaliplatin infusion and got controlled to placebo. So patients were randomized in these two groups. The groups were equivalent and similar in all sociodemographic characteristics. And we followed them for the maximum of 12 months. So what were the key findings that you discovered? Well, the main find is that it didn't work. So it's a negative study from the clinical point of view. And it adds to a large literature of negative studies um, because this is a very important issue. 7% um, of the Western population will have colorectal cancer. And almost all these patients will have at some time contact with oxaliplatin. So we're talking about a lot of people who will have this acute neuropathy with pain and a proportion from 15 to 20 percent of patients who have chronic neuropathic pain, which can be really, really disabling and have a negative impact in quality of life. So there's a lot of, a lot of research trying to find ways to either propose a prophylactic treatment to these patients or to do some intervention to make this neuropathic pain more tolerable. So in a way, it's a negative study, but we also, on the good side, is that we have a lot of data on these patients. We have nerve conduction studies, we have skin biopsy, we have uh, blood tests for genetic purposes. Even our job right now is to look at the data and try to pinpoint a subgroup of patients that might respond to this treatment. Uh, these patients are, we try to, to have homogeneous, a homogeneous group of patients, but still they are heterogeneous. There's stage three and stage four. Stage four. We are going, right now we're going to look at the subgroups of patients and try to pinpoint responders and see if, if we can maybe 
propose a more tailored intervention to these patients? Well, you can call it a negative study, but we can also call it a positive effort as you're trying to improve uh, quality of life for patients. Yes, you're right. Thank you, sir. Appreciate Thank you. your time. Thank you.